Hey, before you watch the show and enjoy it, hopefully, but I have no control over how you feel, please do consider uh, joining up at loudearthcrowder.com slash mug club. You have four or five more shows every single week, as well as the entire Blaze TV catalog. You get this wonderful hand-etched mug, and more importantly, it's what allows us to continue this show and put any of this content on YouTube, because uh, this isn't where everyone here makes their bones. So louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. And of course, if you're on YouTube, you're not there yet for mug club, hit the notification bell and hit all notifications. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Experts are now saying that binge watching online content makes climate change worse. Hardest hit by the news, uh, actually, is Greta Thunberg, who just signed a new $15 million Netflix deal for her stand up debut, so she's not going to. Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> How dare How you? How dare you? How dare you? My sister in law, somewhat frequently, probably every 10, 20 minutes or so, reaches down and scratches her lady business. Uh. <laughs> Should she just like out scratch her to make? That's what I would do. <laughs> I would sit there and be like, <laughs> I, mean, I would be like no. a spider monkey picking ticks. No. I think that they pile on this guy like he's done nothing right. He walked into politics and he slapped the entire system <laughs> and he spoke to politicians in a way they've never been spoken to. And all of these elitists that thought, if you voted for Trump, you're a racist. Well, dumbbells, that's why he won, because you misread my most- Hold on a second. Like dumbbells, that's right next to cornball. <laughs> Certainly, a dumbbells is always good coming out. <laughs> Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Betty! Thousands of people demonstrated nationwide Saturday for the fourth annual Women's March. Thousands of women and their allies have flooded the streets across the U.S. Hundreds of people in downtown Dallas today for the fourth annual Women's March. Going on now in our national uh, government, we're going back to the 50s. At the Dallas Women's March and marches all over the country, not about Trump. Donald Trump has got to go! Four years in, the Women's March target hasn't changed. Hello, ladies. No, debate is a trap. Men need to respect women. So you should respect women. I am a woman, so f you. I f you. I didn't say that. I am a woman, I just became a woman. No, no. That's the shoulder. This is called the uh, only dance I can do because I've injured my lower back. <laughs> so I it's a limited this. dance. I wonder if that's who invented the dust your shoulders off. So it's just oh, a lazy just a, yeah. quadriplegic. Well, I guess it would be paraplegic because he wouldn't. Injured. Otherwise, it would just be injured. Right, you can't right. be able. So you can't even do that. Like, it's still there. You can't oh, do it. It's I got still. Oh, the horror. Uh, we have Jocko Willink <laughs> yeah. on the show. I'm wow. sure he'll be thrilled after that. Right. Uh, Jocko Willink on the show. We'll be talking about AOC's recent, uh, I guess we'd say, interview from MLK yeah. Day. And yeah. everything you need to know about impeachment. I'm sorry, we do have to get to it. But first, question of the day. AOC, as we'll get to, uh, she recently said that the Democratic Party is not left enough. Hmm. That there is no actual left party. That they're hmm. merely centrists. Do you think that the DNC today is moderate? And, and specifically, the self-professed centrists out there, I want to hear from you. If you're a centrist or a moderate, where do you feel the most comfortable uh, in today's political spectrum? Also, why are you such a fence-sitting pussy? That's what I would like to know. <laughs>
Yeah. Other question Don't of the day the punches. for a friend <laughs> that I have. Do you believe that someone can truly be an Ozzy Osbourne fan and not at all familiar with Ronnie James Dio's catalog? I think he's a liar. Let me know. Oh, wow. <laughs> My half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is here. Thank you, sir, for hey, being yes. here. Glad um, to be here. Thoroughly, and he's talking here like it's NPR. I know, right? Picking yeah. up uh, Quarter Black Garrett. How are you? What's up, doll? I don't yeah. like that at all. Audio no. Wade, too cute, yeah, Manny. G Morgan Jr., Gerald A., what's the wine of the. Uh, the day. Wine of the day is Red Schooner, Stephen. And actually, it's a wine of the world. Red Schooner. It's, it comes from Argentina, but Not it's made in California. Red Schooner, oh, yes. your nickname I at the uh, local penitentiary. There's, there's 20 more minutes of story. Just goes and does conjugal <laughs> visits to put a smile on their faces. <laughs> oh. He does his part. So generous. Service, yeah. Lot to get to. But first, um, well, well this, this clip had to be first. F*** the patriarchy. F*** Donald Trump. F*** Mike Pence. F*** white supremacy. Racism, <laughs> misogyny, <laughs> homophobia, poster, transphobia, no. <laughs> capitalism, <laughs> classism. Yeah, it's a little too long for a picture. She doesn't even look like she's passionate Evenism. about it. She just looks like she's <laughs> rattling <laughs> off a list. <laughs> like it's her grocery <laughs> list of, <laughs> of <laughs> yes. out there. I'm here in front of the White House. I am not here for polite protest because huh. patriarchy is not polite. I am not here That's for Ronald quiet McDonald. protest because patriarchy is not Why polite. is she flipping her friend the off, the cameraman? <laughs> yeah. So rude. The patriarchy in Cairo, Egypt, where I'm from. The patriarchy across the world. The patriarchy in every time zone. And the patriarchy in every universe. Oh, hmm. People in hmm, Pacific wow. got it two hours late. Uh, yes. <laughs> what? Like, what? Oh, what? Yeah. Me? Us? <laughs> She's the reason for the Arab Spring. So. I, did, you, I, did you catch? What was that last part? The patriarchy across the world. The patriarchy in every time zone. The patriarchy in every universe. <laughs> Shouldn't have gone with the Toll House. Uh, no. oh, man. You gotta summer. go with Spunkmeyer, man. It's, yeah. There's no question. So good. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that this is my life. Uh, kicking things oh. off, by the way. The New York Times uh, has endorsed both Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar. Oh, wow. The Democratic primaries. This is a quote from them. The contest is between moderates and progressives. And the paper felt the two were the most effective advocates for each uh, approach. And some, by the way, even feel that a joint ticket with the two women could bring sort of oh. these two rivaling factions oh. in the DNC together. And I, is that quarter black I'm getting word that actually um, the two are holding a surprise joint press conference mm. on just that now. Is it just me or did, did she pop a titty? I, 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 yeah. I think it I saw, happened. I thought, uh, the titty go to Wita could have titty go pop. <laughs> Janet Jackson. Yeah, C-SPAN uh, yeah, is uh, good with the live yes. censoring President wow. yeah. Klobuchar, which by the way would explain the initially confusing <laughs> right. recent endorsement from Julian Castro. Yeah. Mm, yeah. He uh, does gusta. Uh, oh yes, uh, he does. Yes, he does. Julian Castro gustas Makes what sense. he gustas. Yeah. Yeah. He gustas. Makes sense now. <laughs> Oh Man's gonna go. Was that outside of a Walmart? But they don't even taste like apples. What's the apple? We eat what we like. <laughs> <laughs> Was that only a Canadian commercial? Oh, probably yeah, so. Yeah, I yeah, think probably, I think probably so. so. I don't, know. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't bring that Canadian noise. All right. Well, you know what? It's good that he dropped that when he did because yeah, true. he yeah. gustas them taste too much to be trusted too much. with a finger on the nuclear codes. <laughs> too much. <laughs> I don't know. I feel is like it's a positive for him. I, I don't know. I feel yeah. like he'd be easily distracted. Be like, all right, Putin, that's... Is that them tees, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, Sir, we have to launch now! Speaking of the 2020 race, of course, people, you out there uh, most likely know this. If you don't, Tulsi Gabbard is now suing Hillary Clinton for defamation. Ooh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Comes she from should. NBC News. The suit states that uh, Clinton falsely stated Tulsi is a Russian asset and a deliberate attempt to derail her presidential campaign. And uh, Hillary Clinton actually has responded oh, more good. recently. I want to make sure I get this right because, you know, law Suits. She said, "This is just another absurd attack in a long line of plip 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 bur plip plip bur." And she had another seizure. Oh, oh. yeah. She had a oh. seizure, which you would think she wouldn't write plip plip yeah. bur yeah. while seizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But she's just trying to get the message out. Yeah, you know what? True. Maybe she was more committed than I thought. Maybe it was code. <laughs> Throw your hat in the ring for 2020, Hillary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please don't. Um, Hillary and Klobuchar. Well, anyway, but now we have a, a transition from that to actually sad news. Oh. Sad news, Diego, uh, a famous 100-year-old oh. tortoise, Dang. who was instrumental, by the way, in preserving 
species from extinction. He was father yes. to over 800 tortoise babies. Wow. wow. Has died, unfortunately. Oh, 800 so sad. So sad. babies. Wow. He was a busy tortoise. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. And in preparation for the public funeral, where people can pay their respects, the coroner has said that he's worked incredibly long hours, citing uh, 10 hours to have Diego stuffed, 12 mm -hmm. hours polishing his shell, and mm -hmm. 20 hours required to wipe the smile off his face. <laughs> so that's... <laughs> and there he is. Wow. Yeah, there. Look at him. It's a tortoise. <laughs> National he's hero. Actually, he... he he didn't die. Oh. He's just retired. Oh, he's just retired. Yeah. Oh. But that didn't work for that Photoshop. No. So he lied. Way, way to bring back um, to the story. <laughs> I know a lot about tortoises or torti. I don't know. Not so much about porpoises. <laughs> and I know they're entirely Porpi. porpoises. Porpi? Porpoises, yeah. it's a, basically a dolphin? Yes. It's a different type. A, is it a dolphin? It's a mammal. It's not a it's dolphin. A, it's, it's not a dolphin? Right? No. So it's a sea mammal. Is it a whale? A it's porpoise? more of a whale than a dolphin, yes. What? Okay, all right. The hell are we you know what? Like this isn't going to work. A dolphin Someone in the comment section yeah. who Something undoubtedly else. exists and knows <laughs> a lot about porpoises, please let me know. It's already <laughs> down there. It's already, already, yeah, already yeah. Yeah. You didn't have to ask for that one. We'll send you know. a free bag of uh, Black Rifle coffee because we accidentally double ordered. We're going to have 30 oh. pounds of coffee very soon. <laughs> they have porpoises uh, all right. Uh, do porpoises? They don't. They can't have coffee. It's probably like dogs. It's toxic. It's toxic, clear. Right? It's clear. None of us know what porpoises are. Okay, we've made it clear. We are porpoise ignorant. Uh, a public, Jocko Willing coming up after this, a public relations executive with ties to Jeffrey Epstein has now claimed that the bad press she's gotten is just like the Holocaust. Oh, oh good lord. Yeah. Yeah, direct that's quote, lest you think I'm making this up, like we did, he retired, the tortoise didn't die. But this one's real. This one's real. Yeah. Uh, Trust us on this one. According to the PR powerhouse Peggy Siegel, I'm getting on that train and I'm going to the camps. If I had been in Nazi Germany, it could not have been worse. Oh. Of course, historians dispute her claims, pointing to the most obvious factual discrepancy in that Hitler actually killed himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could not have gone worse, except for all the murder, the genocide in, in, yeah, in, yeah. in, in German. But, but by the way, can we be on the lookout for a follow-up story? I'm pretty sure after this gets out, it's, it's going to be worse. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll <laughs> yeah, probably I think her life worse. is going to get a little worse now. Yeah. Well, I don't know. She's probably just the kind of person who blissfully walks through life comparing things to the Holocaust. It's true. <laughs> My long line of McDonald's. And that's the Holocaust. Uh, and that's the Holocaust. Geez. Well, I just asked you to pick some swatches. Not that one. I like the Holocaust one. Why is everything <laughs> a reference? With you. Is your scale the Holocaust? That's it. It doesn't apply in everyday life. I believe it does. You Broken. should have levels. You Broken should have nail, levels. Holocaust. Uh, <laughs> hey, by the way, congratulations are in order for uh, Tim Tebow. Oh. Yeah. Who, yeah. Uh, you may not, married former Miss Universe Demi Lay Nell Peters. Yeah, so good for him. By the way, you hear, you hear that, parents? Don't homeschool your kids, or they too might grow up, become a millionaire, and bang Miss Universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cautionary tale. Starts in the home. You know? <laughs> Starts in the home. Yeah. You gotta plan ahead. Awesome. Proper influence your child. Yeah, but he throws like this instead of like this. Okay, you sleep yeah. in a race car. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He also played in the NFL and Major League Baseball. So. Look at Gerald taking it seriously. Uh, hey, you, damn you. <laughs> Mrs. Gerald Morgan Jr. was not the first choice. No, it was Tim, Tim Tebow. Tebow. Yeah. Leave Tebow alone! <laughs> <laughs> Staying in, uh, well, let's go to international, I guess. Uh, Hong Kong Express Airways recently had to apologize for forcing a passenger to take a pregnancy test before the flight. That's I know awkward. you think that probably doesn't make any sense. It probably won't, but I'll explain it anyway. Uh, this is from Sky News. Many Hong Kong mothers have actually been traveling to give birth where their babies can be eligible for the United States citizenship. Oh. And the woman in question wasn't actually pregnant. Oh, no. But when she told the airline, they didn't believe her. Uh. The, the good news is that she will still be featured on the cover of this month's Deceptively Fat Asians Monthly. Oh. So she is going... Congratulations. Oh. Going places, yeah, for sure. Beautiful and brave. Yeah. I want to wow. see even Brendan search history for that one. <laughs> I was like 50% sure that was going to be oh me in Photoshop, gosh. so I'm glad that it wasn't. Thank what, you. With, a, with Asian lead, you know, Asian's very slender, typically right. speaking, yeah. right. but yeah. their leaders are all portly. Yes, they yes. are. The privileges of winning. Yeah. You, you get to eat. What we is that what it, it is? <laughs> Winning? Oh, you, you know what? Know. Something, Charles, the rich are different. <laughs> <laughs> they have food. Um, all right. So I guess you'd call this entertainment news, and we'll be talking Man. more about AOC and impeachment, which I really don't uh -huh. want to do, but no, we always have to not. touch on impeachment to. because that's the only thing. Uh, the singer, I don't feel like I need to describe Madonna. Do I need to say no, singer no. Madonna? Not really. No. The artist... 
formerly known and currently known as Madonna. <laughs> um, Madonna's canceled upcoming tour dates after announcing that, of course, she's fallen ill. Oh. Uh, to be clear, doctors say that it's nothing serious and that soon Madonna will again be to her old self a wrinkly old whore. Oh, oh that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the clinical that's, outlook. Fa that's fairly descriptive. You're right. Yes. Uh, uh, did we send her that cookie bouquet? <laughs> is it? No, I think we do. We send her the uh, the Sherry's berries. No. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> Sherry's berries. Sherry's yeah. berries. We do not have them as a sponsor, and I yeah. doubt that we ever will. <laughs> no. Uh, Wrinkly old whore. <laughs> Sherry's berries. Love me, love me not. <laughs> yes. It's it's an interesting flavor. <laughs> Lie a whore, lie a whore, and you know it. <laughs> Name that movie line. All right, finally, uh, KFC now is a apologize. Does anyone here know that? No? Oh, no. Nope. All right. Is this another Canadian commercial? No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's okay, I'll give you a hint. It's De Niro. Finally, uh, KFC is apologizing no. for a recent advertisement that was uh, mm. accused of being sexist, and we'll, we'll give you that one. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. <laughs> Man. I get yeah, the complaints. It's pretty blatant. Wow. Yeah. That one. I understand it. Good. Yeah. I what? don't think you have to be a feminist <laughs> oh to say, yeah. By the way, big, big fan uh -oh. of this commercial, though, believe it or not. Julian Castro. Oh. <laughs> Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, he's just so on message. I really yeah. appreciate he it. Good every time. What he does. He's yeah. consistent. That's yes. what I love about him. Take Stick him with or it. leave him. You know, you see politicians, yeah. they flip, they flip. I know. He doesn't. I often feel like politicians are too often trying to hide the fact that they gusta them titties. Yeah. Yeah. He stays right in the middle. And That's we all down. gusta them titties. Yeah. Yeah. We all do. Um, <laughs> trivia winner, I think you have it there, Quarter Black Garrett. Yeah. Is Phil? B I'll do it. Phil yeah, Bates yeah. <laughs> on Twitter at Lovely Love, who uh, correctly answered that I was psychoanalyzed by Jordan Peterson. Ah, so you right. will get something in the mail. I have no idea what it is. Um, okay. So first, we have to hit on impeachment. I'll try and hit this really quickly because not right. a whole lot has changed, but there are some Ugh. processes that you should probably know yeah, about it. So just a lot of theater. The impeachment proceedings, of course, they've been brought against President Donald Trump. They're continuing last week after delay from Pelosi. The House managers delivered the articles of impeachment to right. the Senate. We see the uh, the impeachment managers now who are going to make wow. that uh, that walk to the Senate side. Do we need to play by play? Deliver the articles <laughs> from him, of impeachment. Really? It is a moment of left. solemnity. We got a right. Solemnity this have been a process that has been filled with with <laughs> rancor. Mm. Why is like 18 why is, cameras? Why is Trudeau the, in the uh, Capitol building? <laughs> It was apparently oh. directed by Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> so we need another angle. I want to get angle, this and please. I want to have a yeah. swooping shot that goes Nancy's pantsuit. And then I want it to come up and then for some reason Ben Affleck sent it. But we don't. Uh, oh, no. uh, by the game. way, what is Lester Holt? Uh, Can we? Yeah, no one's really. Anti what is? Is he? Is he biracial? He looks like Who a. Knows? He looks like a very stylish Muppet. That's always what I see. He just. <laughs> <laughs> very, very stylish. <laughs> He's dashing. It's That's almost like we had. It's almost like we had that prepared. Yeah. yeah. It's like we. Huh. Oh no. I spent so much time combing over. So, like if Dolce and Gabbana made a Muppet. Yeah. Yes. No, it would exactly be right. Lester Holt. That's what oh, I'm yes. picturing. It. That's I actually it. don't Just dislike like him. I think he's pretty no. good at his job. But stylish Muppet. So. <laughs> Let me go through the timeline <laughs> here, um, which McConnell, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, has released. Yeah, we have an overlay right. uh, for impeachment. So uh, 24 hours for opening arguments. Then there's going to be 16 to question legal teams, four hours of argument uh, as to whether bringing in witnesses or not. Then there's the vote. Two thirds majority, of course, are needed. That means 20 Republicans will have to join 45 Democrats and two independents to convict. Now, remember, in the House, three Democrats voted against impeachment and one voted present, which means... Is Lester Holt, is he Ethiopian, do you think? Uh, you know, maybe, maybe so. <laughs> I don't know. He, he just seems a little, to have that, he, a little I think. lighter. Because yeah. Ethiopians, yeah. they're surprisingly light. They are. They are. Yeah. yeah. A lot of Americans misconstrue Ethiopians with Kenyans. Ah, uh, yeah. No. Ethiopians, so lighter. Sure. Kenyans, yeah. good at marathons. Very good. Oh, helpful. That's uh, okay. Yeah. So we've covered well, impeachment. Well, I don't want to. You know what? I've realized this. I'm pretty much not happy at doing my work unless I'm either creating or learning. Right. right. And, and teaching, by the way, as well as learning. When I have to do research to go through some of these uh, meat segments or deep dives, as people call them for you guys, I learn as well. So it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Impeachment, nobody's learning anything. It is political yeah. theater. And so if people say, well, why don't you talk about it? I just, I just, I, I don't care. <laughs> There's no news. I'd rather 
rather talk yeah, about Gusta good. Ingdem titties. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you've driven us you to, and media. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's get to, actually, I think this is uh, more important because kind of like with the 2016 campaign, everyone was focusing on Hillary Clinton. And we focused on Bernie. You can go back and right. watch those videos. Yeah. Uh, we have the most viewed videos on Bernie Sanders in that 2016 period. And we thought, okay, Hillary Clinton is, it, it's going to be effectively a coronation, right, with Hillary Clinton. But right. Right. Bernie is the movement candidate. Right. That's the one that you have to dissect and ridicule so that people see the absurdity for what it is. Mm-hmm. Same thing here. If people are just focusing on Klobuchar or Warren, and I understand they're way further left, um, I think it's important to still recognize that Bernie and now AOC, these are the movement candidates they are, yeah. that you need to be more concerned concerned with. So mm-hmm. it, that being said, at an event that was uh, commemorating Martin Luther King Jr., yes, one of them Junior. nailed a thing to the door of the church. Different Martin Luther. One of them, Luther. black guy. Different yeah. one. Uh, Alexandria yeah. Ocasio-Cortez <laughs> gave an interview with author Tanihisi Tanihisi Coates. Tanihisi Coates. Well, here he is. Coates. Yeah. Another thing that I've been really thinking and sitting with today is that we there's this gun rights protest that's happening down in Richmond. Right. And on MLK Day. On MLK Day. <laughs> but here's the image that has struck MLK with me the most the about no that. Is that <laughs> when we go out and march for the dignity and the recognition of the lives of people like Freddie Gray mm-hmm. and Eric Garner, mm-hmm. the whole place No mention of Brown. No. The one that started Black Lives Matter. Or Trayvon. Riot gear mm-hmm. Without a gun in sight. Mm-hmm. And here are all of these people um, flying Confederate flags Ooh, with semi automatic weapons, mm-hmm. and there's almost no police officers mm-hmm. at that protest. Which, by the way, I know you're thinking, mm-hmm. could, is this mm-hmm. old from last year? No, no, it's the same MLK event, same, same host, and court. she's like the Ricky Gervais of MLK Day <laughs> oh, events. Over, over. <laughs> And, and I just, and, and this guy just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right. And by, by the way, by the way, okay, MLK Day, before we get into yeah. the, the facts, it, some of it is a scam. Do you realize that the trash didn't come? I, my trash comes on Wednesday. Uh-huh. They have yet to come because of the holiday of MLK Day. Really? Hold on a second. Because of MLK Shameful. Day, you can't do your job on Wednesday? <laughs> They pushed everybody Excuses. back. And so I understand angry. everything MLK Jr. Yeah. Uh, stood for. But you right. know what? I'm going to throw the baby out with the bathwater because I have overflowing trash at this point. Not, I don't even know what to do with recycling. <laughs> stinky. Hope you enjoy your voting rights. Is it worse than the Holocaust? <laughs> I'm just checking in. Uh, okay. By the way, she says a couple of things. We'll get to the fact <laughs> that actually she, she's they, remember the guy says on MLK Day. Well, as though guns are... Right, Martin right, Luther yeah. King Jr., by the way, applied for concealed carry permit to defend himself and was denied despite qualifying. Right. MLK was not anti-Second Amendment at all, and no. that should point us to the dangers of giving over that authority and autonomy to the government. Because at mm. that point, the government didn't provide equal rights to blacks, and they had their justifications. Well, guess what? That can change at any, that can change at any point yeah. if the government is in charge of granting and recognizing rights as opposed to it being granted by an, uh, a creator, an inalienable right. So yeah. you remember when we were down doing the change my mind, it's the exact same reason for people who are like, oh, Second Amendment doesn't apply to me, right? Oh, no, no big deal. I don't care about guns. The same argument was made with the First Amendment. We would hear from people who would say, well, I think the government should decide what's appropriate to be said or what's offensive. And I said, oh, okay, great. So you want Trump to decide. Uh, no, not not that government. But that's exactly the so point. Pence. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. So, so you know, we'll kick him yeah. out. You're going to go to Pence, Pence right? is just going to be dipping them back into shock therapy like Electro Island. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's when you come down, you look at the Second Amendment, you go, who do you want to decide? Right. Do you want the government to decide who can defend themselves and who can't? At a certain level, we know that there are restrictions under the Second Amendment, right. but not the kind of restrictions that are being pushed right. by the left. Yeah. And, and it's almost as if, you know, she forgets, like, guys, every time you guys get together and march, a town usually gets lit on fire and yeah. looted. So maybe yeah. we need a few more <laughs> and people And by the there way, you guys is not... It means, no, it people. Means, yeah. means but, stupid people like AOC. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with the race. It's all stupidity. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and by the way, something else, it's also based on a false premise. She said, oh, and there is not, there are all these guns and not, not, a, not a police officer in sight. There were three different police forces working yeah. overtime. And like, like, like uh, Gerald said, the event was peaceful, unlike the Black Lives Matter protest, which, by the way, she didn't mention, Ferguson. Hands yeah. up, don't shoot. Start it with Mike Brown. Yeah. Little word of advice. Don't try to punch a cop or pistol whip him with his own gun. Just for it's, starters. Yeah. 
So in Ferguson, you had <laughs> so rioters, yeah. cost the city millions of dollars. Yeah. Dallas, 12 officers were shot, five were killed. So again, which side would really need more police at their events? Not to mention the little fact mm. that an Antifa member tried to firebomb an ICE facility after being inspired by AOC's concentration camp rhetoric. And I want to be really clear here. It, was, it wasn't like some guy in Christchurch then mentioning, oh, Candace Owens as a troll job. This right. person believed that uh, there were concentration camps going on. At, uh, it's really more like a Pizzagate comparison. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, look, and this is the same event that right before this, right before we uh, played that clip, they were praising the work that was done in Ferguson and also by Antifa. Yeah. These two groups. I'm like, are uh, you serious? Of course we're going to have protection from these people. What, what These work? people, again, I, I use stupid I, people. I lit a Dura flame under a Walgreens. <laughs> Who would have known? It's like a, what's it? Well, what do you, what did you, what do you mean? No, no, it's like a, it's like a fire starter, like a log wrapped. I know what Duraflame is. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you put it under a wall? Well, and then the gasoline. The big then I steal fan. your cars. Uh, <laughs> and that, by the way, could be a uh, Puerto Rican gentleman. No yes. idea. Uh, next clip. It was also stupid. We don't have a left party mm. in the United States. Mm. The Democratic Party is mm. not a left party. Did you add the mm uh, I did not. <laughs> He's just doing that? That's all him. Which is remarkable the because he's slapped The Democratic Party is a center <laughs> Ventriloquist. or center conservative party. Seriously, every time they go <laughs> to that guy, mm. He, mm. his mouth is open mm. like this. Mm. Like, you know, like um. Sonny Liston after, and then he, and, but he, but he uh, how do you go? Somehow uh, he gets the I can't go, out. Mm. it's just, uh. Uh. he's got his own soundboard. Uh. He just hits it. Oh, yeah. uh. That's my white. He's probably a DJ. <laughs> so hold on a second. There is no left party. The Democrat wow. establishment. They're, they're they're moderate. Do you do you mean like I don't, do you mean on immigration where you guys are for reasonable immigration reform, border security? Oh no, wait. Hold on a second. You are for not only completely open borders yeah. and no wall, but against not deporting. We're not talking about dreamers or children. You are against deporting serial violent felons, provided that they currently live in sanctuary cities, mm -hmm. and you're against sending back criminals who are in our prison illegally? Oh, okay. Oh, well, you must mean the Democrats are more, what, they're more moderate on abortion, say, yeah. for things like no. limitations that most Americans, even who identify as pro-choice, like 20-week mm. limits, I don't know, maybe the first try. Oh, wait, no. Oh, you mean the entire Democratic Party, with the exception of Tulsi Gabbard, support abortion up until yeah. the baby crowns? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So, I don't know, maybe the Democrat, let me think. They're uh, centrist on firearms, right? Where maybe they're just talking about making sure that right. violent felons right. uh, don't get firearms. And wait, no, hold on, that's already the case. Oh, no, oh. no, no. You're talking about the dissenting opinions in Heller versus D.C. and the entire Democratic Party who want to make all semi-automatic firearms illegal? What do you, hold on a second, maybe, do you mean Democrats are moderate on taxes and they believe in a progressive tax code where, I don't know, maybe like 37% in the top bracket or maybe our corporate tax should be comparable to other nations like Sweden? Or, oh, oh no, wait, you're okay with a 90% tax and you want us to have the highest corporate tax in the industrialized world? I just, I think there's a disconnect, you crazy, horrible human being. <laughs> Oh, very, very sounds, sounds center conservative. Yes. Yeah. Very, very yes. conservative. Yeah. And, you know, they were just talking about there in that, that clip right before it, too, that you you can't. She's like, I don't believe that you can capitalism your way out of these problems. We have to get Medicare for all onto the floor for at least a vote. We need to be able to do that. I'm like, that's not a centrist policy yeah. to give right. everybody. Money. It'd be fantastic. Give every American a million dollars right now. They would probably be better off, but we would also be broke. I don't know. So well, have you run the numbers? Do stuff. <laughs> don't you bring your info on my show That's without true. a reference? That's true. Well, I do According like I me. do like the fact you remember she was uh, kind of lambasted for the amount she spent on Uber black SUVs driving <laughs> right. around yes. for the campaign. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like capitalism did did her bad. Right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, it sounds horrible. Well, we so. go there what through abortion, guns, taxes, immigration. I mean, Mao say what? Okay, <laughs> next clip. <laughs> Story that's not told is the impact on our collective psyche mm. on the island. Mm. There's um, again. What is this? Mm. No mm. one believes Sounds like the turtle humping a work that boot. The United that the mm. <laughs> treats them as, treats us as full citizens. Because we, the United States doesn't. You know, my own family, it's like they had all of these emergency backpacks ready to go She's with about torches Puerto Rico for and MREs and rations mm -hmm. because they knew that no one was going to come. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's just and that's the that's just psyche. Smart. And to know that a society does not care for you has a profound impact on one's psyche. Remember how we talked about ascribing intent? Yeah. So not only did she just ascribe motive and intent, knowing they don't care about you, but then also attributed non-existent policy to it. <laughs> Or actions. Yes. This goes back, lest you, you've forgotten, all the way back to 2017 with um, San Juan Mayor. Uh, he, he was claiming that Trump was uh, withholding right. relief aid. I don't know yeah. if you guys remember yeah, that. Yeah, but if you recall, actually it was the mayor 
who hadn't attended any meetings, and Puerto right. Rican officials had, they completely failed to coordinate delivery of the supplies. Yep. So even those that they had received remained completely unopened. Look, in that, 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 that picture right there, that's a press conference in front of Unopened supply boxes. <laughs> That's like Donkey Kong Country's banana hoard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, whatever could these supplies be? But, yeah. Right. But, Why? But exactly. it, so it must be because Americans hate yeah. Puerto yeah. Ricans. Of course. Of course. And they, the right. supplies actually sat so long that some of them you couldn't be used anymore. Oh, yeah. Because they didn't distribute Expired. them. Right. Well, now, okay, so with the recent earthquakes, this is obviously what we're talking about thoughts and prayers of the people of Puerto Rico. Of course. Uh, Puerto Rican government has repeated the same cycle with loads of supplies remaining in warehouses, not. Not wow. being distributed to those in need. I guess time to blame in America. It's America's fault. <laughs> 51st state, fingers crossed. Right. Because <laughs> AOC, AOC was down there, right? She was the one finding the warehouse yeah. that had yeah. the supplies. Well, she, she said us. We. Yeah. She, she said, said we. Us. She said we and then correct. You bartended in Brooklyn for like three decades. <laughs> <laughs> Since she was one. Early start. Yeah, very early start. <laughs> but we. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She just well, came I, out suckling on a bottle of Jack. I, I think what one of the problems that we yeah, see sure. in cases like this, it's much more fashionable and politically expedient to bash Trump and say that this this people group is against you yeah. than it is to actually go out and do the work of distributing supply. Well, no, I think what's really important here, and yes, you're right, but I th the problem with Puerto Rico is not the United States. It's not our conservatism. It's right. not free enterprise. It is the bloated bureaucratic government that you, AOC, view as the solution to all problems. When you talk about taking out big businesses, when you talk about fair distribution, when you talk about more centralized regulation, who are you talking about? The exact kind of people, government officials, mayors, Governors. So I don't know the entire, maybe it's a part, Puerto Rico, I don't know exactly no who it is. I know important people. The point is, you want them to be in charge of these disasters exclusively. You want them to be in charge of medical aid. That's also why you want to take away tax exempt status from churches, who, by the way, provide an overwhelming amount of relief to a lot of these uh, foreign countries. We did it here with yep. Hurricane Harvey yeah. at did. one point, Absolutely. and they don't want to say, because, by the way, unless you forget, the argument is, well, you just did that so it's a tax deduction. Right, 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 right. Yeah, we raised yeah. several hundred thousand dollars for Hurricane Harvey because we would pay a few thousand dollars left in taxes. You moron. You googly-eyed demon. <laughs> That's a new one. I, I so so I, I always wonder though at those arguments because then it's the argument that we should discourage um, charitable donations by taking away that small, tiny, yes. de minimis mm. yes. incentive. Yes, because that's going to encourage more. Yes. Oh, that well, no. The whole idea is take it away, put tax more, more put in the, the game to the government, yes. so that they can sit on the supplies. But I thought the government was the one that wasn't sending the aid correctly. Oh, that's just because that, you were raised in the era of Mao. Think, don't think it's like confusing that. for oh, you. It is. It's I'm confusing. Confused. Yeah, I know. He's, don't ask he's coming I, in his mind. It's still always Tiananmen mm, Square. He diverts back <laughs> always. It, it is. It but is. he's he's rooting for the bad guy. Yeah, who's driving the tank? Unfortunately, it's like he's saying full speed ahead in the tank. It's like payback with Mel Gibson. Right. He wants the bad guy to win. All right, by the way, <laughs> hit the notification uh, bell and hit all notifications on the bell if you've hit the notification bell before and you're subscribed because now apparently the notification bell does not alert you of all uploads or the live streams. New video mm -hmm. goes up every single night with the exception of Sunday. And, uh, ah. of course, join Mug Club, lottowithcredit.com slash Mug Club because that is what allows us to continue to produce this content for you and like 80% more content there in the, the entire gym. Blaze TV catalog. Uh, all right, I think we have more of this, this broad. Next clip. You didn't make those widgets. Mm. You sat on a couch. Mm. Maybe a while love seat. Thousands Maybe of a nice people sectional. Were paid <laughs> a fainting couch. Modern day slave wages, and in some cases, real slave, real modern day slavery. No. Uh, depending on where you are in, our, in, in terms of food production. Mm -hmm. um, Not in this country. You made that money off, off the backs of undocumented people. Mm -hmm. You made that money off of the backs of. Um, black and brown people being paid off a living wage, uh, under mm -hmm. a living wage. You mm -hmm. paid that money off of the backs of single mm -hmm. mothers. Single mothers. And who, all of these people who are literally dying mm -hmm. because they can't afford to live. Mm -hmm. And so no one <laughs> ever what? makes I'm a billion sure. dollars. I like her hype man. He's yeah. so low key. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you take a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Laying on like your couches time. with the jokes on you. I was on a day bed. <laughs> <laughs> It's a convertible. It's a futon, way, okay. Do you notice how right away she feels? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's Americans exploiting black and brown people paying them slave wages. Mm. Let me ask, how about the brown people paying brown people? Uh. What's their going rate, sweetheart? <laughs> Let's get into the fair trade oh, bullshit. Wow.
Yeah. I'm sorry. This thing bothers me so much. You see this yeah. all the time. People talk about like like coffee or whatever it is that they're buying at the store. Cacao, which is a stupid term. It's cocoa. It's cocoa. It's cocoa. You just haven't roasted it. Stop saying cacao. It doesn't change what it is. Cold you did. So you see this fair trade label on there. And what happens? They tell you the story, right? They go, well, yeah. you know, it's fair trade because if you don't pay fair trade, these people in these countries, we don't realize they're being exploited and they're only making a dollar a day. And you don't ask them, well, what are they making with your fair trade cocoa? About a buck fifty. It goes <laughs> further uh. there. They don't provide the context. For example, I think we right. have a source here. Ivory Coast agricultural workers make on average four dollars a day. Those who work uh, for fair trade certified companies see it boosted to a whopping six. Ooh. So they're not so being paid an American minimum wage. You need to provide the scale and the context. And on top of that, this goes back to AOC's false claim, the living wage claims, which doesn't really mean anything because it changes every single year. Right, yeah. They were debunked by Washington Post last year, lest you think that it's fake news. The company, of course, that, that uh, Alexandria uh, 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 Ocasio, Nina Pinta, Santa Maria Cortez, the one that she always takes aim at is, is Amazon for not paying its employees evil. a living wage. These evil billionaires, yep. right? They didn't make these companies. They nope. just sat on their, uh, what was it, the love seat? They just sat <laughs> on their love yeah. seat. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. just really Sexy pretty moments. much, uh, they sat on their bean bag. <laughs> didn't make these companies where there are now hundreds of thousands of people who have jobs. Right. Amazon uh, alone employed 750,000 people in 2019. That's a, wow. It sounds like a lot. And by the way, you wanna know what AOC would do where she's talking about this if someone like her, so it's not necessarily about AOC because she probably won't make it to some kind of serious uh, national platform as far as president please or something no, like that please, because no, she's crazy. You can see to the eyes. Please you know, no, no. <laughs> yeah, please, please no, please no. What are you, calling a squirrel? <laughs> it's my eye, it's the way my eye is, it's the way my eye is. Oh, well, okay, Trying right. to get the horse to Were go. Were you dropped? So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you want to know what someone like AOC would do if they were in power nationally as they mm. bitch about Donald Trump in one of the most uh, burgeoning economies that we've ever seen? Look at her district in New York, where she gave Amazon the boot despite the overwhelming support of her constituents yeah. wanting yeah. to bring Amazon in along with its 25,000 jobs at below a living wage, mind you, $150,000 yeah. average annual salary. Yeah. That's more than six, But she's right? for the workers. Yeah, we should just toss that to AOC. <laughs> nice. Think about that for a second. 25,000 jobs yeah. in Queens, gone. $150,000 a year. Right. The point is, if you, just, if you think that that's exploitation, you just hate companies that aren't government owned. You exactly. want to nationalize everything. Don't tell me that it's about $16 an hour. Don't even tell me it's about $25 an hour. Right. You kicked out 25,000 jobs, averaging $150,000 a year. It's it. That's over. You're done. Nobody likes lying losers with crazy eyes. Next clip. <laughs> I think it's totally fine and human and natural to feel mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. So my Jordans are okay. That's, that's I think your timeline. Jordans are okay. That's, that's a, you know, it's like good if to you see live, your priorities are straight. You live in it, wow. Then like live in it mm. while fighting for a better world. Right, right. <laughs> God, <just> a, <laughs> that's too easy. Wow. Of oh all the gosh. companies, she uses Nike as an example. <laughs> Is it oh, me? Man. Is it yeah. me? It's a little crazy. <laughs> the same Nike famous for exploiting sweatshop labor conditions in other countries that we don't allow in our capitalist system, by the uh. way, here in the United States. <laughs> but it's okay when it's Nike because they support sodomy and this ass. <laughs> so that's fine. Hey, what is it with the eyes in these people? I yeah. don't know. Not these people hey. like the color. Again, oh, what can, I get, can I get? Uh, we defined that in the beginning. Oh, can I gosh. get sponsored? Sure. What are you looking for there, Kaepernick? Free, free Jordans, like once a quarter. Good. <laughs> we'll put you on. We'll put you on a poster at Dick's Sporting <laughs> exactly. Goods. I do think you know what I do find interesting is remember when she talks about you know on the backs of black and brown workers who are not paid a living wage. Single mothers. Right. You yeah. notice Single she's mothers, she's yes. not concerned about anyone besides a minority, right? There's right. no worry about yeah. white workers who may also be exploited. But here's the other part: is the message here don't hire single moms? Is the message here, yeah. don't hire minorities? Mm -hmm. No, of course not. The, the idea that these companies aren't also contributing. So is she saying that uh, all the social media companies that are making billions of dollars, they're the ones that are the problem. We should break them up and not allow them to have the control yes. they have? Mm -hmm. no, I don't know. Maybe I agree. Truth. No. Oh. I'm a little confused. I, honestly, the Nike thing threw me for a loop. It really is. <laughs> it's yeah. nuts. It's, it seems like quite the contradiction. Yeah, I, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. It seems as though it's nonsensical. Uh, I think we have. Is this the last clip of AOC? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank, oh, thank, thank goodness. You. Thank you. Yes, okay, so let's roll it. To be ethical, if you're a billionaire today, the thing that you need to do is give up control mm. and power. And your sexual. So I don't want your money <laughs> as much as we want your power. Oh boy. We don't want wow. to demand you earned it, right? for a billionaire to fund this or that. What we want to demand 
is to change these systems, change the business model that has exploited so many people. Huh. I wasn't looking at my iPad. I just, honestly, I was just looking down because I'm very sad. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing for her. We want her. your power. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Come and take oh, it. Wait, oh, okay. So, so someone should make a company, produce something, employ people, add value, and then you, oh, so you'll steal it. Right. Mm. No, Steven, you're misunderstanding. Uh, billionaires, as she stated before, never make a billion dollars. They, they take it. They take it. Right. As that's, opposed to mm-hmm. what AOC right. does. That's not taking it. No, it's not taking it. Not taking it. It's clear. repurposing. It okay. It. All right. <laughs> Toss a couple a of Googlies into the mix. We're murky on the rule book. Yeah. By the way, before we get into the whole thing, idea of why that is horrible. Jeff Bezos, I don't agree with his politics. We've talked about that quite right. a bit. But he's not some guy who was raised wealthy with a silver no, spoon in his mouth. Right. This is a guy. This is the American dream. Created it. Less, I keep saying less. I should stop. It's because yeah. Lester Holt Lester's, is in my mind. Yeah, it's, it's on your mind. Yes. <laughs> the, we have to bring that back up. He does. He, he looks like a stylish yeah, Muppet. He does. He does. In <laughs> case you've forgotten, Amazon was a bookseller for right. a long time. It yeah. didn't become what it is today accidentally. I don't oh. agree with his politics, but what gives me the right to take anything? from Jeff, Be- uh, Jeff Bezos. This is, this is the, the concept of right, they wanna take from people, AOC, who've actually worked to create something. It would be, right. to give you a more kind of direct comparison, I think I was talking with a researcher, uh, Reg, who's brilliant, just, and he's so strong, he squats like 630 pounds, oh, wow. he's like a competitive power Scary. lifter, at 180 pound body weight. Jeez. I said, imagine this, if we could put on just sort of this, these helmets, like I think you've seen them in Star Trek where you switch bodies, and you've done all of this work, and for eight years you worked to create this total so you can compete in a national level in powerlifting, and all of a sudden, I just go and I suck up your power because here's the thing she's talking about giving us your power well we see with Puerto Rico or the government even the United States they don't give up the power once they've taken it the power is going somewhere you are talking AOC about displacing power from people who are beholden to adding value lest they lose power I said it again versus you who will have the power subsequently regardless of having earned it and we should know this anyone who has a serious firearm a high caliber firearm and has never used it never trained with it that's a bad idea put someone under a 500 pound barbell who's never worked their way up to create that strength it doesn't end well these people who want all of the power as she just said haven't earned it it will collapse and they will fold under the weight and subsequently uh, the American people and I understand and why, if someone had to work to create this, let's even go back to Jeff Bezos. I don't agree with his politics. Why is it immoral for Mr. Bezos to want to keep what he's created, but it's not immoral for you or me to want to take it? Again, displacing this power from billionaires, you're going to displace it to people who made Puerto Rico happen. And, and, and you know, to people, I just, it's this, let's go through this personally yeah. here. I guess right. this is what you want to say, give up the power, and I'm not a billionaire, but this company would be in the same tax bracket. That's something that people don't tell you. Right, okay, yeah. so no matter what I did, by the way, not taking a paycheck, not taking a salary, not being paid a dime for this show for two, three, four, five years, mm-hmm. building it up, sleepless nights, running it out of my den, then an old massage parlor, in case you haven't watched <laughs> behind right. the scenes is what it was. We yeah. found out afterwards, they were, were like, why are there no outlets in That's here? Awesome. That's disgusting. I have no idea <laughs> that why we rented this office. Now I get why the rent was low to move to a new office. We went from one employee to three employees to five employees. Now to 15 employees who all make, by the way, significantly above a living wage. But because this was successful, because I built something that actually adds value, it's it's inherently immoral. Okay, yes. I understand, Dios. You know what? I'll, I get it. I am going to give up the power. And you know what, Court of Black Garrett? I'm gonna give the I'm gonna give the power to you, so, to you, the quarter black. Yep. All you have to do is touch that button, and that power is no longer mine. Real? Oh. Yeah. Mm. It's yours. <laughs> oh, 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 idiot! Oh, all right, Couldn't Jocko Willig, coming up Boom. after this. Jo- Jocko Willig, coming up. Our world is increasingly ruled by technology. Information moves faster than the speed of light. But how do you know that you and your personal information are safe? That's why you should protect yourself with the latest in cybersecurity technology, a sticky note. Are you worried that it might leave you open to hackers, spies, geoblocks, IP detection, ad targeting, NSA habit tracking, traffic logs, third-party microphone access, and theft of your personal data? We've got you covered with a sticky note. 
And if you're concerned about all that other stuff, there's always ExpressVPN. Obviously, if you're a fan of this show, you spend a lot of time online. But every time you open a browser, you may not know this. I didn't because I was a technology idiot. I was like, my, you know, my grandmother with a giant VCR with a giant blue buttons. It, it was me. And even it was a VCR with a giant blue buttons. I still don't know how to work it. Little is TiVo still a thing. The point is online, you're leaving yourself open to hackers, IP detection, targeting could be the NSA, Russians. We have no idea. But what you do online should be your business and your business only. That's why everyone here uses ExpressVPN. We actually use it when we've done some searches, I believe, with uh, Tulsi Gabbard to look at algorithms and, uh, and test it with different locations. It has, I mean, it encrypts everything. 100% of your data is safe. Uh, the software takes about a minute to set up on your computer, your phone. Really easy to use. Uh, if you go to expressvpn.com slash scrowder right now, sign up. You get an extra three months of ExpressVPN service for free. And also, really important, they didn't have any kind of a data breach as some competing VPNs did and didn't tell you about. So good track record. The ball's to sponsor the show. And you should be using a VPN. Please consider using ExpressVPN. Expressvpn.com slash crowder. And now, a reading from the Democratic Socialist Manifesto with Comrade Cortez. It's become evident that the bourgeoisie is unfit any longer to be the ruling class. The squad is the ruling class now. We run this sh Me, my girl Ilhan, Rashida, and uh, I never learned the other girl's name. It doesn't matter. We're coming for you, Israel. Yeah! Join Mug Club because soon, videos like this will be all that's left on YouTube. Oh, hi. Uh, hey. Seen on the board, do you guys have Black Rifle coffee here? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we only carry good small batch coffee here. No. Well, it is great small batch coffee. Well, that really can't be unless it's fresh roasted, so I don't, I don't you know. Well, it is fresh roasted. I don't, I don't think you know what that means. You know what this is? This is Masa Le Kwa Pique, which of course in the Indonesian language, oh, let me finish. In the Indonesian language, it's weasel coffee. You just made that up. No, it's been passed through their digestive tract. That's disgusting. And then it's nature's wet processing. Yeah, but is it good? I mean, it's all right. Are they investor philanthropists? Do they? support good causes. Yeah, tons of causes. Veterans causes and first responder causes, but it doesn't matter because they make good coffee. So that's what I'm wanting. Do you have any? You know what, actually, I'm, I'm just gonna order it. They make it fresh and okay. roasted. Right. Black Rifle Coffee. It's good. Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, by the way, if you go to blackriflecoffee.com slash Crowder, you enter in the promo code Crowder, uh, you'll get 20% off your first order. Uh, and, and we over-ordered, by the way. It's like the kid's book, Who Put the Pepper in the Pot, where everyone thinks the other person put the pepper in the pot, and so they all put pepper in the pot, and then the pot is just too hot because there's so much pepper. The point is, we're going to have like 30 pounds of coffee because everyone here double-ordered. We'll be giving some away. Comment below why you love coffee, how you like your coffee. And uh, listen, Black Rifle Coffee, they are veteran owned, uh, a portion of their profits go to veteran, uh, veteran organizations. And that's all great, but here's the thing. They make better coffee than the competition. So just give it a try. Um, and they fresh roast it, that's really important, by the way. A lot of people don't know, coffee is a bean, it's perishable. After about a month, it goes bad. So Black Rifle roasts to order as soon as you order the coffee. I love the, uh, the vintage roast, the green bag, uh, the coffee saves. Go to blackrifle.com slash Crowder, enter in the promo code, and uh, if you drink coffee, might as well drink better coffee that supports good causes. You feeling good uh, there, quarterback here? No, man. Okay, well, chip her up, because I will tell you this, our next guest is usually very serious, mm. very stoic, very oh, stone-faced. Yeah, right, right. Stoic, you know, I guess it would go back to uh, Marcus Aurelius. Was he the creator of Stoicism? I have no, I have absolutely no idea. The point is, he was very chipper before we came on air, which That's true. makes me yeah. think he's done, he's used some illicit substances. <laughs> uh, Recently. But you know him and uh, you love him. Uh, you can follow him, of course, Jocko Willink on the Twitter, JockoPodcast.com. Yeah. I do not have his newest book yet, but it is Leadership Strategy and Tactics, a Field Manual. And Origin USA, he uh, has a supplement company. They do all kinds of American clothing right. now. I 
hope I've gotten all those incorrectly. <laughs> Mr. Willink, how are you, sir? I am doing outstanding. Thank you for having me back on your program. Thank you very much. I pre- Why so formal? What does that mean? First off, uh, you say here's the thing. You're such a you're such a, a studly guy, but that sounded so bitchy on your program. What is yeah. this Mean Girls? Well, it's just that your whole intro thing kind of made me say to myself, "All right, he's taking himself way too seriously. Let's mm. just attack him out of the gate." Yeah, so that's what we're doing. That's absolutely fine. It'd be like when you're rolling and right away you just snatch a Kimura and crank it for dear life. I didn't know. Um, all right, we'll talk about that during the break a little bit. Some uh, some stories on that because of yeah. course people. Who don't know Jocko Willink. Not only highly decorated uh, military background, but uh, an accomplished uh, jujitsu fighter as well. Um, all right, so Jocko, first off, tell us about your new book, which uh, you did not send to me, uh, and how it differs from these. You know what? Let's just. Uh, yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll put in digitally the new book. <laughs> yeah. um, t- how does it differ from the previous books? Because I've read them, and uh, I will have yep. one of my producers here who's a huge fan. He's read everything. But obviously, you know, you read one leadership book, you think, like, I got it figured out. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's what people think all too often. And, and so here's the deal. I have the, have the leadership consulting company, Echelon Front. I go around all the time talking about leadership, talking to companies, talking to business leaders. I have a podcast where I talk about leadership all the time. And I take questions. In both those situations, I take questions from people. And I would get asked the same questions over and over and over again. And what I realized is that people might understand the principles, but they're not quite sure of how to actually apply them. And so I would get asked the questions. Well, I I took all those questions down over the years and I eventually wrote down all the leadership strategy and tactics that I used, wrote them down in a book so people could open up the book, see the problem that they have, and then find a solution to that problem. So it's very granular. You know, it's called a field manual. The reason it's called a field field manual is in the military, there's field manuals for just about everything that you do, for how right. you shoot a gun, for how you clean a gun, for how you use a compass. There's a field manual for everything. They're very simple, very straightforward, step-by-step. That's what this is. It's for leadership, and it's simple, straightforward, step-by-step, how to improve your leadership capabilities. Well, let me ask you this, because you say that you've gotten a lot of questions. And I ask this because your books are pretty clear. I mean, they're pretty in-depth, the ones that I've read before. So do you find, especially being seen as someone who's relatively intense, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn, are people afraid uh, to ask you questions in real life? Do they feel, are they worried that it might be a stupid question? And how do you usually react? Someone like you who's been specific in your instruction, what kind of questions come back to you? Get, get questions all the time. Okay, so the first book called Extreme Ownership. You know, someone might say, and the, the, the premise is if you make a mistake or if a mission fails or a project fails, then you actually take ownership of it. So I'd get this question all the time. They'd say, hey, hey, Jocko, what if I take ownership of the problem and I say it's my fault and then the team looks at me and they say, yeah, you're right, it is your fault. What do I do then? You shoot them. And so... I, well, no, no, actually, okay, what you okay. say to, <laughs> I, there's what it's you multiple say to choice. The team is, what you say to the team is, uh, yes, I just said it was my fault, and now you're saying it's my fault. That's what I said. It actually is my fault. I'm taking ownership of the problem, and these are the things I'm going to do to make sure that we get this problem solved and it doesn't happen again. Because what happens is when people say, you know what, this was my fault, I take ownership of it, they think now, oh, okay, cool, now I get a free pass because I said it's my fault. Right. Well, that's not the reality. You, you still have to take ownership of the problem. You have to figure out what the solution is, and you have to implement that solution. So those are the kind of things that I, I answer these questions all the time, and I put them all in this book. How do you deal with someone that has a negative attitude on your team? What do you do with them? How do you deal with rumors running rampant? Just all of those problems that people experience in leadership positions, I tackle them. Yeah, well, what what happens um, if everyone says it's their fault? If it's like I am, you know, I'm Spartacus, but everyone's just like, yeah. I'm an idiot, I'm a moron, I screwed up. I mean, what, you know, whose fault is it? Yeah, what well, what happens is what you end up with is interlocking fields of fire. So so what that means is Ooh. on the battlefield, yeah, you and I are supposed to cover an area. Well, we don't we don't take one little section and say, okay, everything to the right of that, I'll cover everything to the left of that, you cover. No, we actually say, uh, we, we open it up so we have a little bit of overlap. Yeah. So when on a team, when multiple people are saying, well, okay, the supplies didn't get here on time. And the supply person says, yeah, you know what? I didn't set up the logistics right. And then me, I say, you know what? You didn't set up the logistics right, but it's actually my fault because I didn't order the materials early enough. Yeah. Well, now what we both do is now I start ordering them earlier and the supply person starts cleaning out the logistics train and now that problem is solved from two different directions so it's never going to happen again so yes when you're on a team and people start taking ownership everyone will take ownership it's awesome they'll all get the problem solved 
But sometimes it's awkward if you say, I didn't get the logistics right. <laughs> and the other guys just say, yeah, you should have done that. Then it's yeah. even less comfortable. <laughs> Well, that's the thing is, and what, what kicks in is people's ego when they go, I didn't get the logistics right. And they want people to go, no, 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 you did great. No, no. People are like, oh yeah, yeah, you actually didn't get them right. Cause that's why it took so long. Right. And, you, and then their ego goes, wait a second, it wasn't my fault. I should have, well, actually it was your fault. That's the thing about extreme ownership. Extreme ownership isn't just lip service. Like, well, if I say it's my fault, everyone will ignore me and, and give me a pass. That's not what happens, and it shouldn't happen that way. So it sounds like this this uh, book could, I mean, part of it could be substituted with just being married. You just say, it's my uh, fault, and your wife yeah. says, absolutely. And then you go on your merry way and avoid making her uh, cross. So people people align these things, and I know you said it joking around because you're like the comedian and all this stuff, you're supposed <laughs> to be funny. Well, I don't but, have the cleft. Okay, yeah. So. People, people bring it up all the time, though. How does this stuff apply to marriage? And yeah, it absolutely applies to marriage. So when your wife says, oh, no one took out the garbage, you didn't take out the garbage this morning on Monday, so now it's going to be sitting in the alley for another week. Instead of being like, well, you should have told me, you should have reminded me it was Monday. No, you say, you know what? It's my fault. I'll, I'll actually, from now on, I'm going to put a reminder on my calendar so I remember. Yeah. And your wife goes, good. Yeah. And, and, you, and now you don't let your ego get involved. You actually take ownership of the problem, and now from now on, you get the garbage out on time, and you don't have a stinky alleyway. So it actually works, and, and your relationship will be better with your wife. Except for when it's uh, near a holiday, and they switch the trash day, and then yeah, you have to that? kill the trash man. That's what happened New Year's. Uh, That's why I've still been laying never low. Let, you know. let me ask you this, and I want to get to so, sort hey, of— don't, don't, you have, don't you have neighbors? Well, actually, my neighbor went through my mail, which is a federal crime, so we don't talk much anymore. You can always impose your, your garbage on your, on your neighbor's trash can if it's really stinking. This is that, true. Right? No, no, I have a very there. old neighbor who lives in the house with the lights off, and all he does is come out to trim his bushes and uh, sort through my mail. And I said, hey, I love you. It wasn't malicious. I said, great, I appreciate it, but just because if we're gone for a long weekend, you don't go through my mail. That's not how this works. <laughs> you know, that's a true story. Yeah, yeah Johnny always bring it in. He's like, hey, your mail was in uh, so-and-so's mailbox again. Um, I want to get to uh, uh, sort of Iran and Soleimani a little bit because you have some insight yeah. there that I'd, I'd like to kind of um, mm -hmm. sort of, uh, I guess, I guess uh, what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. I had a stroke. But before that, <laughs> you know, right now we have an incredible economy uh, that's been really doing well the last few years. But we also have 1,300 CEOs who've, who've stepped down in the past year. And as someone who works with a lot of CEOs and people in, in positions of power, um, executive power, particularly with businesses, why do you think that is? It's something that I haven't necessarily been able to, to figure out. Well, when a company's doing bad, the, then that blame is going to shift to the CEO, which is where it should shift. You right. know, when, when, when a company, when a team is not doing well, it's the leader's fault. And if the leader doesn't do things to reverse that course and get things on track, yeah, they're going to feel a lot of pressure to step down. That's that's what's going to happen. And I've, I've seen it over and over again. When you have a bad team, a bad group, a bad company, you can change out that leader and absolutely turn things around almost immediately. I, I used to see that with SEAL platoons. Occasionally, we would fire a SEAL platoon leader. Cause the, cause, and we're firing the SEAL platoon, platoon leader because the SEAL platoon is performing badly. Right. We would fire that guy, bring in a new leader. We'd usually tr find a leader that had some experience that was a good leader, put him in there. I'm not kidding. The next mission they would go on, next training mission, everything would be smooth. And, and that, that's the impact of leadership, of good leadership. So when you see a company that's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're not performing well, the, the, eventually the board or the, the uh, chairman of the board or the investors are going to turn to that guy and say, uh, yeah, we don't want you anymore. Yeah. And they can call it stepping down, but they're getting fired. Oh, is that what, because I was going to say, it's, it's, that would apply if the economy were doing poorly or these companies are doing poorly. But if you look into it, some of these companies are doing, rel doing pretty well, like most companies are right now, and CEOs are stepping down. But you think that a lot of that is maybe stepping down? Uh, well, I mean, you know, you might also have people that have done enough and they've grinded it out for 18 years and they're going to take some time. I mean, I don't know what particular cases that you're talking about. Maybe it is people that are just ready to step down and enjoy some other part of their life. That's a possibility, too. I'm talking broadly when I deal yeah. with companies and the CEO leaves. Generally, generally, it's because the CEO and the company is doing poorly and the company is doing poorly because the CEO is not leading well. And that's actually the I only work with most of the companies that we work with at Echelon Front are companies that are doing well. Right. And the reason that they're doing well is because they're humble. And that's why they're coming to us asking for help because they want to improve their leadership. And they're humble enough to ask for leadership. When we work with companies that are not doing well, 
We show up there. The board, the board tells us to go and talk to the company. The board wants us to help them. We show up there, and of course, the, the, the CEO and the leadership team saying, we don't actually need your help. We're doing great. It's just that the market's bad, and the competitor did this, and the union said that, and that's why we're failing. But it has nothing to do with us. Yeah. Or like my neighbor who steals my mail, he always just blames it on the Mexicans. Every time. <laughs> Which I just, I'm like, well, I, don't, I don't understand. I know the guy who does your pool, his, his name is... Um, let me ask you this before. I actually want to ask you one question on that and then get to um, your tours in Iraq and then bring in uh, our producer. But um, you said you, you touched on something there, which I think is important. And I've had a lot of fighters on this show. We've talked about this. You said some CEOs just realize it's their time to step down uh, and they want to move on to another part of their life. Listen, you're an intense guy. You've obviously accomplished a lot in the military. Now you're accomplishing a lot in the business world. But, you're, you know, you get up at 445. Uh, you, you do it by choice. I have problems sleeping, so I'm always up at four. But I also understand that this is not a pace that I've been maintained for the last couple of years, I can do forever. Sometimes the people who are in positions of leadership are the last to know that it's maybe time for them to take on a different role. And it's not because they're incapable, but it's because maybe they're in a different stage of their life. And I ask you this because a lot of fighters are the last to know that they should stop fighting. Um, how do you think people who are successful and disciplined and intense, how do they recognize that it's their time to move on? And, and how do you think you'll ever have to make that decision, you know, yourself? Because, yeah, you're, you're, you're jack of willing now, but at some point, you know, you're going to get old and, and, and you went gray young, so it works for you, but that's not going to be there forever. You mean I'm not going to be gray forever? You're going to have nothing there forever. That's <laughs> my point. It's going to be Dick Cheney in about eight years. It's just an Instagram hey, I, app. I think for people, I think a lot of people that, that, have my type of attitude. I mean, I'm always looking for something new to do. Right. It's not like I want to stay and do the same thing over and over again. So I, I think for me, I'll be looking around going, okay, this, this, this felt pretty good. Let me turn this over to the, someone else and move on, move on to some other challenge. So it's about, do you think a big part of it is feeling confident in sort of handing it off to someone who's capable? And that's why it's so important maybe to, to build up new leaders? Yeah. I, we, we used to say we always want to work ourselves out of a job. So I want my the two platoon commanders that are working for me, I want them to both be able to step up and take my job and do a better job than me, right. which means then I can move on to the next level. Yeah, I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, let me ask you this. During your, your two tours, uh, I believe you did two, right, in Iraq, if yep. I'm not mistaken? Yep. Um, you know, Soleimania was obviously recently in the news. What is your opinion on that s situation and sort of the Irani influence on the war with your direct experience? Yeah, so with my direct experience, especially my second deployment when the Iranians were, so this is now 2006, I was in Ramadi, which is in Western Iraq. It's a, it's, I it's stayed a in Ramadi area. in uh, uh, Albuquerque once. <laughs> that, that is <laughs> well, not pleasant. <laughs> yeah. I moved on it down was, to the Hacienda. So. <laughs> yeah, well, the Ramadi in, in, that I was in was, was not very nice either. Probably comparable. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Continue. <laughs> Uh, it was a Sunni area, so right. the, there wasn't a huge Shia influence other than the military. The, the Iraqi military was mostly Shia soldiers. So it was Shia sol soldiers coming into Ramadi with us, working amongst the Sunni populace, fighting against a predominantly Sunni insurgency in that area. So as far as the Iranian influence there, it was less. However, during that time and increasingly through 2007, 2008, 2009, the Iranian influence increased a lot, especially in and around Baghdad. Uh, there's a place called Sadr City. You know, it's it's an awful place. And that is and all over, you know, Baghdad, surrounding areas, the the Iranian influence was making these these IEDs, which are called EFPs, which means ex explosively formed projectile and where a normal IED would not penetrate the skin of a tank or of an armored personnel carrier, those EFPs would absolutely, they would penetrate the armor and they would kill everyone inside or kill or wound people inside. And these, the Iranians, Soleimani, were, they were specifically manufacturing these, shipping them to Iran, teaching people how to emplace them properly. And he was accountable for the deaths of I don't know what number, I think they say 600 Americans, but it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Americans. Right. This is an evil human being that uh, needed to die, and I'm glad he's dead. Well, and I know that you've said that, so how would you, and I know you often avoid sort of speaking on politics directly, which, which I appreciate because you're in a position of leadership where you can influence people of all stripes, but how, how would you sort of respond, or what's your reaction to um, a lot in the media and some on certain sides of the political aisle right now portraying Soleimani as kind of a respected 
uh, Iranian military official, and, and a lot of people have condemned President Trump for the action he took. So there's a couple things that I've said. Um, first of all, he was not just an enemy. Soleimani was not just an enemy of American troops right. in America. He was an, he's an enemy of his own people, of the Iranian people. This is a guy they've killed. And again, you don't know what the real numbers are, but in the neighborhood of a thousand, maybe more, maybe less, protesters, people that are standing up against the Iranian regime have been killed in the last six months. This, the Iranian people do not want this regime in power. And, and so when he gets killed, what did we see? We saw the Iranians rising up in the streets and, and the protests against the downing of the Turkish airline, once again, that they immediately lied about, kind of changed their story, but the Iranians don't want this group in power. Right. So we killed someone that's an enemy to Americans and an enemy to the Iranian people. And, you know, one of the other things that I said was I said that this was a gamble. Yeah. That Trump took a gamble. And, and OK, maybe maybe that's not the right word choice. And maybe I should have explained it for some people that were looking to pounce on everything that somebody says that's positive about President I Trump. I think it is a good word choice. I will say I would I would defend it because I think you're right. Listen, and I think most people don't understand that's leadership language. People in positions of leadership, you're always somewhat making a gamble. You're trying to make as educated of a bet as possible because right. a lot of people don't know this. If you're handed sort of a handbook from an employer or from someone who's leading, like you said, this your platoon, you have your instructions. You know what you have to follow. You have very clear guidelines as to what is the metric for success and what would be failure. If you're in a position of leadership, it is always a little bit of a gamble because you're setting those standards yourself. So I would say don't walk it back, but I, I appreciate your candor. Yeah, so I guess I'm not walking it back, but maybe a better word to use would be, hey, it's a risky move. It's, yeah. it, there is risk. And, then, and what I said was, hey, kind of what you just said, when you conduct a military operation, I don't care what it is, there's going to be risk involved. There's a gamble. And the other example that I used was... Obama getting bin Laden. Obama yep. gave the order to go into a sovereign country without telling that military that we were going to go in there and kill someone that was there. That's what we did. That is a massive gamble. And guess what? That gamble paid off. It was successful. We're all overjoyed that Osama bin Laden is dead. And I remember some people on the right when when that happened and they said, yeah, Obama killed Os Osama bin Laden. And people said it wasn't Obama. It was the SEALs. I, I get it. Right. But it was actually Obama that gave the order. And that was a huge gamble for him to take. And it turned out to be very positive. I'm happy that it happened, of course. Right. Soleimani, very similar. This was a big gamble for Trump to take. I would say maybe not as big of a gamble in some ways because he didn't really risk any American lives. But everyone, America has been so scared about what the reaction of the Iranian regime would be for 40 years. We've been nervous about it. And he said, okay, well, we're, we're gonna find out. And he did it. And their reaction was to throw some, some missiles into the middle of the desert and say, yep, we're not doing anything else, we're good. And that's and then you got you got to see the regime getting turmoil uh, against yeah. them back in Iran. So overall, a very positive result. And was it a gamble? Yes. Could the Iranians have done some crazy uh, attack back or a series of attacks? Sure, they could have. They haven't. They didn't. Well, I think you're also dead. making you're talking about a tactical retaliation, but um, I think we're, we're we're pretty clear in the fact that uh, as far as the the moral conundrum that's been presented, that it it wasn't it wasn't really a gamble as far as ah, is he is he not a good guy? But hey, before we go, uh, wouldn't mm. it have been cool? We're talking about gamble because it's always a roll of the dice. If someone right before they they shot Osama bin Laden said, "Oh, we rolled the dice, it came up six, SEAL Team six, blam." <laughs> That's a diehard sequel I'd see. All right, listen, I will say this before we go. The book, of course, is uh, author, uh, sorry, the, uh, the author of the book is Jocko Willink. It is Leadership Strategy and Tactics, a field manual. I have a producer here for people who are uh, watching on YouTube. We are going to go to a web extended. If you are not a member of Mug Club, Smooth Manny, who uh, hails from Columbia, is obsessed with Jocko Willink. Manny, are you uh, nervous? Dry mouthed? I'm a little dry mouth. You're a little bit dry mouth. You need some water. And uh, we have Jocko T here. Jocko, Jocko, sure. T. Jocko, I'll warn you, it's borderline creepy. I think he has a hair puppet somewhere. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to Web Extended. That's JockoPodcast.com. Stay tuned.
What's your home defense plan? When it comes to safety, there's no substitute for a quality firearm. And if you're a gun owner, there's no replacement for firearms legal protection. Firearms Legal Protection provides lawful gun owners an uncapped legal defense program, 24-7 emergency hotline, access to a network of over 2,500 experienced attorneys, legal education on firearm laws in your state via our mobile app, and plans to protect you every step of the way if you are involved in a self-defense incident. Visit firearmslegal.com slash LWC today. Ahem. What a complete disaster. Excuse me, did you just blow in from dress like a spazville? How do you walk around looking like that? Ah yes, there you go. Now you're ready to fight the man in style. Louder with Crowder merch makes these two slobs look better. Get your Louder with Crowder gear at louderwithcrowdershop.com and cover your disgusting body. Leave it. Oh, gross. Okay, good. Go get it. So the reason I was kind of showing that as awkward as it, okay, Betty, come here, come here. A lot of you haven't seen Betty a ton, obviously, since the hopper. Come on, Betty. Okay, come on. Look. Oh, she's pulled me off my feet a few times. Come on. Uh, leave it. Leave it. Okay, good. Go get it. The thing I love about this, this breed of dog, too, I was talking with Jocko about this, and I thought it was relevant to um, today's sort of, you know, I'll come back here so you guys can see me a little more clearly. All right, Betty, I'll be back in a second. Talking with Jocko, you know, a lot of times sort of comes up this topic of strength or what it is to be a man. And uh, what I love about these dogs, Betty is coming up on uh, close to 100 pounds, we had it with Hopper as well, is uh, a dog that is very capable but controls it. You see that with Betty. It's very important that we train Betty properly. The same thing with Hopper, because we all live by Betty's mercy. I told that to Court of Black Garrett. We're like, we're really fortunate that she didn't just rip one of our limbs off or our face like a chimpanzee on Xanax and red wine with a clicker. Might be a dated reference. Um, but there's something to be said for, and I think this is the way you should live, for bridled strength. And, and that's really important. I think people sort of misconstrue Folks like, uh, like Jocko or like Jordan Peterson or myself when I talk about the importance of masculinity, the importance of being a good man and a strong man. Um, and I think a lot of people misinterpret this idea of meekness. Um, meekness really, and I think Jordan Peterson has talked about this, means uh, being incredibly capable with a sword, for example, but keeping it sheathed and not using it unless you have to. For example, right there, Betty could absolutely tear my hand off if she so wanted, but she lets it go because I request her to. And that's because there's a relationship of authority and submission, one that's appropriate. Here's the thing, um, you can't bridle strength that you don't have to begin with. So when I talk about strength, and when I talk about how important that is, and when I talk about bridle strength, what I am saying is, and I've talked about this before, you know, if you wanna have self-confidence, do you know what you do? Get really, really good at something. That's it. There's nothing else that can replace true self-esteem. You can, you can ban red pens all you want so all of your tests are, are corrected with blue markers and you never get an F. You can equalize all soccer scores all you want your entire life. You're never going to have self-esteem until you get really, really good at something. And you're never going to be strong, and I don't just mean physically, though I think that's important too. You'll never be strong or excellent at everything or anything if you don't work at it day after day and put in the reps and grind it out for measurable progress. And you know what's so sad about that? What's really sad, and this goes back to the idea of bridled strength, which I think is the only way to live, I mean, I'm speaking to men mainly because that's what I know, um, is that people who never get excellent at anything, people who never get strong, they never have the opportunity to bridle it. They'll never know what it feels like to be incredibly capable but also in control and not have to use. Betty, Betty just nut tapped the cameraman <laughs> with the squeaker toy. Bridle it, Betty. Bridle it, you, you silly little bitch. It's okay, I can say silly little bitch. I know it's kind of gross. I don't necessarily anticipate her to lick my face. But I do want you to do this drill here today. 
I want you to think of an area where you're excellent. I want you to think of an area where you might be an expert, where you might be more capable than at least most in your life. For some of you, maybe that could be science. For some of you, maybe that could be physical strength. For some of you, it could be a sport. For some of you, it could be political knowledge. What I want you to do is find an area where you are more capable than other people this week and not lord it over anyone. In other words, find an area where you know you could score points, find an area where you know you would be top dog, and instead make somebody else feel like they're the most capable. Make somebody else feel like they're the smartest person in the room. What I want you to do is bridle that strength and, and know what that feels like. Because that provides um, a confidence that cannot be mimicked any other way. And the reason I also want you to do this is because some people out there, you may not be able to do this because you may not find an area uh, in which you're more excellent than your peers. And what does that tell you? That tells you there's, there's some other work that you have to do because it is one of life's most rewarding experiences that you can, and those who haven't experienced it, that you could possibly imagine is having the ability to utilize strength, to be powerful and choosing to not. And if you aren't making that decision, that just means you're weak. And that's no way to live. I'll see you next week. Betty, okay, that's all right. I'll play with you. Okay. It only takes